Hello, welcome to another Rich Tang's Less Square Theatre podcast with me, Rich Tang. My guest this week is Armando Iannucci. Um, there's loads more of these to go. We're doing, filming more in October and November, and then in February, March, April, and then later in the year in 2018 as well. So go to lessersquaretheatre.com if you want to buy tickets. Uh, future guests include Reginald Lee Hunter, Simon Brodkin, who gave uh, Theresa May uh, her P45, Dave Gorman's just been confirmed, Richard Osman, Paul Chowdhury, there's lots of people to come, so uh, do check those out. Uh, if you go to richhome.com slash gigs, you can find out where I'm coming on tour. The main tour is to be announced in 2018 pretty soon. Why not buy a copy of Emergency Questions? You can get it in book form. You can get it on your Apple phone on an app. You can get it on your Android phone if you're rubbish enough to have one of those. Got you! Um, as well. So, And you can get it on Alexa as a skill for free. The, all the apps are, are free to download. There may be some in-app purchases if you wish. Let's sit back, enjoy, and relax, and enjoy as well. Rigid hands, that's where the fuck is. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome the man who has been <laughs> spending the weekend looking at his son's red buttocks. It's Rich Derry! Thank you very much, hello! Welcome to Rich Derry's Left to Square, Left to Square Theatre podcast. I I was talking to uh, the the, uh, man who invented uh, slush puppies uh, the other day. Ian Slush Puppy, he's called. Uh, he invented, well, actually, he only invented the uh, raspberry flavour. But how did he come think of making it blue? Why? <laughs> anyway, he calls it to us. I don't know if that's... He's very cool, right? So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, my son's not been very well uh, over the weekend. I mean, just nappy rash kind of stuff, but it means you've just got to look at a weird thing <laughs> a long time. I've really had no sleep. Uh, and I, I've been to a, a funeral. I've been... Uh, uh, cont- I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm dressed like this because I've been to a funeral. I'm not... I haven't been to Precourt, and I'm not trying to smarten up. Don't worry. Uh, so, uh, I've, I, you know, I've, I've had no sleep, and uh, I've been crying. So, uh, normal rehearsal for then, everyone. So it's going to be fine. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of into, uh, we've now got two kids and a dog, and like, on Sunday, no sleep, and we're kind of rushing around trying to uh, keep them all happy and keep them all uh, entertained. And I just realised I was just spending my whole day kind of cleaning up a cavalcade of piss, shit, and vomit, and. Uh, it's sort of like spinning plates, but I thought it might be a, a better kind of form of entertainment. I wonder if people would pay to see that, a man having to run around a stage, mopping up the excrement of a different child, a baby or a dog, slipping up in dog. My dog pissed on the floor for the first time in a while on Sunday. Uh, it's just what my life has become. Uh, so maybe that'll happen. Oh, I want to talk to you about this. Um, uh, the, uh, you know I'm quite interested in sex robots, uh, just as... Uh, <laughs> But this man has gone too far. I think this is the guy who was on this morning. I think you may have seen him with his... He's got, he's got a wife and a sex robot, uh, which uh, seems rude. Choose, mate. I mean, obviously, choose the sex robot, but choose. Uh, sex robot creator says he hopes to father a child with his £3,000 plastic love machine. So uh, that's, that's gone a step too far, hasn't it? It's, this is uh, Dr. Sergi Santos, uh, who says he, could, he would programme the child to be a combination of himself and uh, Samantha who is his plastic lover. I can make them have a baby, it's not so difficult. I would love to have a child with a robot. Using the brain I've already created, I would program it with a genome so he or she could have moral values plus concepts of beauty, justice, and the values that humans have. Uh, But he's gonna make it with a 3D printer. Uh, So I don't know that's... um, He says that Samantha, his sex robot, senses when he ejaculates and times her own orgasm accordingly. My wife does that as well, though, to be fair. <laughs> and it's just about as real as what, what he's getting. <laughs> oh, your penis is in me. I sense you're about to come, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway. And he, 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 this is the guy, he put the sex robot in um, a... Uh, uh, put it into a... <laughs> I'm at a fest, a tech fair in Austria, and uh, men came and groped the uh, uh, the people. Mounted Samantha's breasts, her legs and arms. Two fingers were broken. I mean, I think that's the robot. Uh, but uh, <laughs> otherwise, that's not a very good advert for the robot. <laughs> she was heavily soiled. 
I mean, I, they're just on a sofa. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what went on there. Anyway, that is uh, the world of sex robots. So, um, anyway, let's crack on. Oh, I'd like to see uh, the, the making the story of Ian Gunpowder as well on the BBC. Gunpowder. Um, Ian Gunpowder. That's what's about. So, will you please welcome? Uh, my guest tonight. This is his third appearance uh, on the show. Uh, he's probably best known for his appearance on Comic Relief Does University Challenge. That's why we're all here. It's our Monday you ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Good I'm good. I'm uh, I'm a film director now. Uh, I can destroy anyone I want and replace them with a robot. He, so, he came in. He demanded a beer and cr salt and vinegar crisps. That's, yeah. the, that's the kind of guy he's become. Yeah. He never used to be like this. I got Pringles. I got yeah. a little mini tub yeah. of Pringles, and I can eat as many of them as I want. He did. Yeah. He ate the whole lot up. There's nothing we can do. I'm to stop. a film director. When that news gets out, you'll be destroyed. So, um, <laughs> how did you do on Comet Relief Does University Challenge? Well, I expect. It did quite well, but uh, I was captain of the North. It was the North v. the South. I was captain of the North. Um, the South, the captain of the South was Stephen Fry. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I found that the only way I would get points is by, uh, as soon as the question was asked, buzzing and saying, is the answer what Stephen Fry is about to say? <laughs> And then they would throw it to Stephen Fry, who would get it right, and then I'd get the points. <laughs> but in the end, the North was outpaced by Stephen Fry's vast, yeah, that's vast a, brain. That's tough. And in fact, he cheated. It's, it's, it, I, I know people don't think the television is a cheat, but it is. Um, in that the score at the end was artificially, artificially boosted the, uh, the North score to make it look like it wasn't uh, as much as well, a walk People must have known when you didn't answer any questions. And <laughs> then they just go, no, we you've got a hundred points. No, I answered some questions. You know, I'm quite good. I'm, quite I'm sure good. someone could have been tallying along. Uh, yeah. Have you done any other quiz shows? I'm quite, I'm quite, uh, we could talk for an hour about quiz shows. That's what I like to do, and okay. then good night, sweetheart, and then Might. we'll wrap it up. Have I, uh, have I done a uh, quiz? No, I don't think I no, have. Would you do no. Celebrity Pointless? Uh, no, I've never watched it. I only we only kind of get like the last thirty seconds of it as we because yeah. we take the news because <laughs> the ten o'clock news is just too late. Yeah. But we not around for six o'clock, so we take the six o'clock and watch it at nine o'clock. So we get <laughs> so we get thirty so we get thirty seconds of pointless, and it's usually and that's also very good. Ah oh, well, thank you very much <laughs> and uh, good night. Uh, you yeah. take the news. You take the news. <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. like something my grand would do. <laughs> Take the news. Just take the news. The news, the news, news well, we're, we're, beh we're behind now because I've been busy. So don't tell me what happens in the election because <laughs> I'm just. I think. Wait yeah. till you hear about Donald Trump. We did talk about it before. Oh my Ooh, God, Ooh, who's waiting. Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> So look, uh, yeah. I went. To, we, you, you've done a fantastic uh, new film called *The Death of Stalin*, which uh, I went much. to the premiere of this week. Ooh. Yeah, and it's very exciting. What did I've you made... go to the toilet in the middle of the film? I did. Did you see me go? Yeah, uh. because uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> because they gave us lovely seats. You know, because it's my film. I'm the director, and they gave us these lovely seats which were halfway up, so you're not right in front. And yeah. it's, uh, but it was by the gangway where people. Per walk past you to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was because half the room was BAFTA and they're a bit older, they, a lot of people went to the toilet. Through, and I'd seen the film so many times, so I wasn't really looking at the film. All the way through the film, I was going, why is everyone going to the toilet? And then I went, that's Richard Herring. <laughs> so you must have missed a bit. So what bit did you miss? I missed a really good bit. Uh, um, I, I don't was, know. I was quite drunk on Mando, but that's why I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> It was our first night out since the baby had been born. Uh -huh. I mean, in less than two weeks. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we don't no care excuse. about the second one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he can look after himself. No wonder he's got an happy rack. Um, no uh, excuse for going to the was, toilet. The it was of my something film. with the uh, start. Well, if I got up now yeah. and just <laughs> went for a wee, now, yeah. you know. I was sad to miss it. There was, 
<laughs> no, it, so it was a bit about. Uh, it was. A bit, it was a good bit as well because it was about my wife told me what had happened. All right. Uh, and I think it was when uh, they would start. I don't remember any of their names. They've all got weird names, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Stalin's daughter. <laughs> yes. Was talking to um, Chris Chef. Oh right, that's yeah. a good bit. Yeah, yeah, you missed that bit. Um, yeah. But what I found most. And then I saw you come back. Yeah. Well. Oh no, yeah. that's good that I came back. I'm glad I came. <laughs> I'm glad I came back and didn't just pretend that I. Oh fuck this. Uh, I just pretend I watched it. I'll read the book. <laughs> I'll look at Wikipedia to see what happens. Because what I was doing was, I'm not obsessed, but I was clicking everyone out and clicking <laughs> back in. Well, what I was most excited about, and I want to talk to you about Let's the film, go. was that at the premiere, I had to get up and move my coat, because Wright said Fred were sitting <laughs> in the same room. <laughs> and uh, the two, just the two brothers, the Fairbrass brothers. Yes, well, that's... Uh, and they were sitting two or three seats yeah. up from me. Why were they? <laughs> Did they do something for the soundtrack? Was there, is there, on the credits, is there, I am 264. I'm 264 for my big That's Russian hat. I remember this, I remember this with the, within the loop and the premiere afterwards. I remember it, at the premiere, because I'm not really a party person, it's just, you know, and as you get older, you, your hearing goes. So I remember just standing there going, it, music's really loud, <laughs> and I don't know any of these people, and it's my party. I don't really know what's going on, and that's the, so. There's a bit of that. I think yeah. people get invited. Yeah, but they seem yes. incongruous. Everyone else <laughs> seems to be. I just wondered whether they, they were your friends or something. Were you hung around with the Fairbrass no. brothers? Well, me and Right Said Fred. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, we, you we, and two of Right Said Fred, not the bloke with the hair. The cur- yeah. there was a no, curly no, no. hair bloke. The Fairbrass brothers. Me. We every year we go to Troon for. <laughs> For, for three days. Yeah. We go on the Friday, we drive down on the Friday. <laughs> and and if we, we leave early just to avoid the traffic. And then um, we stop, usually we stop at Carlisle. Yeah. And then, so we usually, we're usually there for the first bed and breakfast at about six o'clock. <laughs> and we've, we've rung ahead, and because you can get a meal if you, yeah. you know. So we've rung ahead, we, and, uh, you know, can we have a, a meal for three, obviously. <laughs> Me and Right Said Fred, just the three of us brothers. And then, um, then the Saturday, we kind of don't plan anything for the Saturday. That's really a kind of drive around, see what's, you know, sometimes if it's wet, we go to the, you know, the indoor kind of, um, the machines and yeah. all that. Uh, <laughs> but if it's nice, you can get a boat, you can do a bit of fishing. Yeah. And then, you know, on a lovely day, a lovely Saturday, you can take the fish back and they'll prepare it for you for dinner. <laughs> the, uh, at night. And the Sunday is obviously... Church is at 11. Um, this year, one of the Fairbrass brothers, I can't remember which one, but one of them had, had to go, we had to leave early. So it was after church we headed straight okay. back. Yeah. Do you find it difficult? I found this quite difficult, sitting two, two seats away from them, not to start whistling or singing, I'm too sexy for yes. my show. I think they wouldn't mind. I, mean, I think they'd think that's so. Uh, and I can report mm. they didn't go to the toilet during the film. So that, I know that for sure. And you would have seen them. I, I can report that too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that would have, the light yeah. from the film would have bounced off their heads <laughs> and created a distraction for everyone. Yeah. Um, I think why they were there is it's a new um, it's a new system they've got in the cinema, which is if you put a couple of bald people uh, underneath the projector, it, it, uh, the, the light then. Is, is diverted in, in sort of three dimensions. And it, and it sort of feels like virtual reality, but it isn't. And it does involve having to hire several bald headed, yeah. tall, tall, bald men um, for that to work. So it's probably not going to take off uh, <laughs> against the Sony system. I think they liked, I think if you want to get a quote for the poster, I think they liked the film. That's Great. I, I oh, well, that's it. That's perfect because yeah. we haven't got any decent quotes. <laughs> 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 two of the men from right. The main two, they're the main two from yeah. right said Fred. Yeah. It is what the bits I saw of the film when I was <laughs> in the toilet were really yeah. good though. So um uh yeah, it's what it's it's I'm gonna, it's quite hot. I'm gonna take my jacket yeah, off. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. You do yours and then I'll see how I'll see how sweaty you look and then I'll make a decision. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sweat through it, I think. Just in case. That's all right. This is how they, this is what these film directors, this is how they start. Yeah. They start just you slip your top off. <laughs> My wrist needs a massage. <laughs> hey, come over here. Just do you mind if I just put on a dressing gown for this interview? Oh, Is yeah, it, you're I, right. That's right. I'm the fucking appalling one here. Right? <laughs> well done for being disgusted at me. Well done. Can you do? Is it right to do? That's the thing I don't know. In the, under the present climate, whether you can, what you can. I know you've you got to. Is, people are in more trouble for mentioning it than whatever happened. 
Right. So you can't joke, but James... I don't think so. In the James... end, I think he will ultimately <laughs> face a severer penalty than James Borden. I'm not Borden. sure. I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> I think... But in James... terms of, you know, cumulatively... Yeah. The, you know, the, what his, his past behaviour catching up on him. I think James he... Corden does crave audience love, though, and I think it might hit, hit him harder. <laughs> 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 to have disappointed people. OK, all right, all right. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's an interesting film because it's, it's built as a comedy, and it is funny, it's, it's, but it's fun. like a, such a dark subject. Like, it's, it's very dark comedy. Yes. I mean, you make there's light comedy within that dark comedy. Yes. But it's about the um, lots of rapes and murders. Well, not, not on screen, but no, <laughs> yeah. it's it's uh, uh, it's this is the death of stuff. Did we have we mentioned the type the death of stuff? Death this of is the, uh, Yes. No, it's set around the time where um, uh, Stalin dies. Obviously. Yeah. Spoilers. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's in the title, so it's but um, but for the past twenty years, he's imposed this the great terror which is like his enemies uh, have been rounded up and taken off to the gulags or worse shot and his chief um, the head of the security forces Labrenti Beria played by Simon Russell Beale has been the one who's been doing that but he was a nasty piece of work and he personally liked to torture people and, yeah. and, and also notoriously he was uh, you know he, he uh, pursued sort of young girls and, and all sorts of things. But we don't, we don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's hinted at, and we don't, we, we don't try and hide it. The thing is, the comedy isn't really about that, it's about the behaviour going on in the Kremlin. Of course. But we're very um, direct about what was happening outside across yeah. the, so we sort of... I mean, there, there are some lines that are about it, though, there are the lines where he's going, kill his wife first and then kill him so he can see his wife. Yeah, 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 that, shoot that, her that before him, but make sure he sees it, that yeah. sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, that's what of, it was like. It yeah. was sort of like a kind of nightly occurrence. Yeah. And it was about trying to get that kind of sense of this horrible uh, um, machine going, yeah. you know, having gone But whilst within all of that, the, all these politicians vying for position... Well, who, who takes over, yeah. yeah. But a lot of it is based on true true events, course, true, yeah. true stories, true... Yeah, true yeah well, in the Q&A, so it starts with this... Yeah. Um, Stalin's listening to a concert on the radio and he wants a recording of the concert, but they haven't recorded it, so yeah. they have to re-record it. Yeah, but the yeah uh, they they lock the doors. They tell all the audience they're not going home until yeah, they're recording. We're doing that as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then the conductor faints out of sheer terror, <laughs> knocks himself unconscious. So they have to then scour Moscow for another conductor. Yeah, and in reality, it's true. That's a true story. But in reality, they got through three conductors because the the second conductor they brought in was drunk. <laughs> so they had to send out for a third conductor. So you actually had to dial the comedy down had a to bit. Dial the comedy. To, to it was like it. the events themselves were too hilarious. Yeah. To be believable, so we, we dial them down. Um, and the first conductor is played by uh, Justin, Justin Edwards, Edwards, who's yes. Jeremy Lyons, who does is very yeah. funny comedian yeah, yeah. as well, as a terrific actor. But yeah. yeah, look out for him. It's, it was good fun seeing and seeing. Well, the, the small parts played by fantastic actors, but the big parts are played. Oh, by terrible the, actors, yes. yeah, awful <laughs> actors. Oh, Steve Buscemi, <laughs> Michael Palin, yeah. How, I mean, it's a dream list, though. You've got uh, Jeffrey Tambor. Jeffrey as well. Tambor, who's by I love uh, the Larry Sanders show yeah. on HBO. Jeffrey playing Hank Kingsley. Yeah, and he's thing, sort of so. playing the Russian Hank. He's Hank playing, Kingsley. He did say that when he read the script. He said, "Oh God, it's a, there's a Hank in this because." Uh, he, Jeffrey Tambor plays Stalin's deputy, who was really appointed to be a, like a safe, unthreatening bureaucrat. But of course, when Stalin dies, Stalin's deputy thinks, "Oh right, I'm I'm now running the Soviet Union," and he's just way out of his depth. Yeah. And it's rather like if Hank Kingsley <laughs> had to front the chat show for a week, which yeah, he well, did. Yeah, which he did. There's the brilliant episode where he does yeah. he does it, and he does well, and then he goes, and then, then he his ego goes through fun. the roof, which is sort of. And it's sort of the same. I'm and not saying that no, no, Alexander no, no. Show copied uh, no. the plot off no, no, uh, no. Stalin. No. no. We've seen you and Stuart Lee came up with Stalin. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah, we came up with that idea. Yeah. Why not be a dictator? <laughs> we wrote that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, and, and uh, when Jeffrey <laughs> saw the script, he said, I think there's a bit of Hank in this, yeah. so I was very pleased. Yeah. yeah. And so did you just, did you get your first, I mean, if, it seems like first choices all the way. Well, it's a very, but you don't come up with, like, these are the ten people I want. Yeah. We did it, like, one at a time. I wanted Simon Russell Beale to play Barrier, and then when he said yes, uh, you then think, okay, who's the most unlike Simon Russell Beale to be his kind of 
foil, because it's really a tussle between Barry and Khrushchev. So we got Steve Buscemi, who's like the most unlike Simon Russell Beale, yeah. anyone in the world. <laughs> so and, then, right. <laughs> and then it was a scientific test that we did. And then, and then you think, okay, who would be the good number three? So Jeffrey Tambor, that would fit. Yeah. And then I know I made the decision early not to do Russian accents because yeah. that would just kill all the comedy. But just slow it. I mean, everybody, everybody <laughs> spoke like that. Like a well, week ending sketch yeah, by yeah. Bill Wallace from <laughs> well, There we are. <laughs> Another over 40 year old in the audience there. You know, everything. It's hot, terrible. I mean, they don't well, I saw someone commenting about it, but yeah. it uh, on, online saying how angry they said they're, they're people doing because basically everyone's doing whatever their own accent is yes. more or less on this. So yes. there's English people and there's American people. Yeah. But they're saying how can I can't watch this because they're all doing their own accents and it's ridiculous. But even if they were doing Russian accents, the people weren't. They, you know, you'd have to do it in Russian, really, for you'd them have to, to do be it in Russian. And then which Russian dialect? Yeah. Because it was a massive landmass. Yeah. I believe it was like one of the biggest in the world at the time. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, and and Stalin was from Georgia. He wasn't Russian. He was from he was Georgian. He spoke a completely different language right. as did Beria. And Khrushchev was from Ukraine. I so. think you should have done that. I think it would have done just as well commercially if you had. <laughs> if you got act. I actually think I'm I'm upset because I I will only watch a historical film if the actual people who are in the film are yes. playing themselves. So have Otherwise, to... it's just someone pretending to be I Stalin. And, and they, then have, what's... they have preserved Stalin's body, so we could sort of <laughs> animatrize <laughs> yeah. him. We could yeah. get in Jeremy Bentham from yeah. London University. Yeah, that guy with the sex robots. And sex he could robot. Three, you could do a 3D print out yeah. of what he imagines or the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the personalities um, of the Russian... Yeah, and that would do just as well. <laughs> it would be just <laughs> if <laughs> not better. <laughs> Well, that it would a different kind of audience. That comment was on the bottom of Peter, Hi Peter Hitchens. Small, I think he's written a, another column s subsequently, or is writing another column. Yes, he wrote I a column read about. It. He's written a two thousand page rebuttal today. <laughs> no, it's not two thousand words. Sorry, not two thousand. But well, probably a word a page for today. Of still, why we shouldn't watch the film? But I, I honestly, I haven't read it. Not because I don't want to. I just haven't had time. And it's not top of my list today. <laughs> things to do. I will read it. Um, but he, he's curiously then engaging with people on Twitter about it, which is unfortunate because <laughs> he's going to experience the kind of the worst side of Twitter, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, well, his argument is um, that you wouldn't do a comedy about the last hours of the Hitler, Hitler. dying. Which yeah, I think you would. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's so there's so many comedies yeah. about him. I mean, basically, yeah. that film... Doesn't fall. Yeah. And then there's the... Yeah. It's a sort of comedic yeah, look. Yeah, <laughs> so, And so it's like you're... It's, it's, I think his implication is that you're saying Stalin wasn't that bad and so you well, can do yes, comedy. Well, no, yes, I think his argument was that <laughs> I, I'm sort of excusing Stalin because I'm left-wing in a way that I wouldn't excuse Hitler. Yeah. Because uh, I'm not Nazi. Stalin was left wing and Hitler was right yeah. wing. I be, I being a lovey, being being in the creative <laughs> industries, I am naturally left wing, yeah. as everyone knows. As and, left wing as Stalin, and, and therefore I'm trying to let Stalin off by making a film called The Death of Stalin, <laughs> which exposes his 20 year terror and uh, his 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 uh, mass killings yes. of the population. Yeah, that's me letting him off. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, but this goes back, and there was a, yeah. there was a comment. Actually, I'll talk about it in a sec from the guy doing the Q and A at your uh, at the premiere. But it's, it's the people think. Did you were you at the toilet for most of the film? Back, <laughs> <laughs> that's back. I was there. The yeah. Q and A. Okay. Because you know, I thought oh, there'll be some good questions. I can copy <laughs> them and just ask. Them. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the guy at the Q and A. Uh, the guy, well, yeah. gonna, but no, but it's because they, they well, it's. Someone thinking, he's thinking that if you're doing a comedy about something, you're not taking it seriously, which is... Bollocks. Is, yeah, yes. it's bollocks. bollocks. Uh, There's that thing of comedy is lesser than drama, for some reason. That's yeah. what people think. Well, that's why. So at the, yeah. the Q&A, the guy said, oh, this is a brilliant film. This is the funniest British film of the decade. Oh, God, not to say that it isn't challenging and funny and deep as well, as if that was as if saying something's a comedy and is funny yeah. is a pejorative term. Yes. Yes. And that, oh, that, oh, that makes it, that cheapens it, so it's really, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and it's kind of, that kind of interesting It aspect. is what it is, but I just find comedy is just another way of looking at stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you must be, I mean, 
What do you think of people who have no sense of humour? I find them just impossible to comprehend. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what that, you know, that I find with, them incomplete. Well, that's what you Twitter know. and all this stuff yeah. shows up. If someone d misunderstands a joke or someone's get angry about a joke or yeah. someone doesn't understand the difference between it. And, and, or, or that they think if you're joking about something, you're not taking it seriously. Exactly. I so mean, to just, make, as we did slightly earlier, a joke about the circumstances of Harvey Weinstein is not to say that we don't take what Harvey Weinstein did seriously. No, exactly. Quite um, the opposite. It's, it's, you know, it's the, the opposite. We take it so seriously that we find elements of it hilarious. <laughs> but it's the elements that actually will help bolster our case about how seriously we're taking it. Yeah. And in a way, Stalin, in a way... <laughs> in a way, Stalin was worse than Harvey Weinstein. In, in a way. way. In a way. <laughs> Many, some, many some levels. levels. <laughs> and it's going to catch up with him too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, worse, people will disrespect Stalin in the end worse than James Corden. <laughs> <laughs> no, James Corden is, the, is definitely still the worst. The James Corden is up there with Mao, <laughs> Stalin, <laughs> Manson, just, yeah. I mean, I think, and you were saying accidentally in the Q&A, but it, it, this does sort of seem to, uh, this film does seem to like give you a little insight not in the same way, but into in, into the way politics is going at the moment, in the the sort of the half truths and the lies, well, yeah. and the, the infighting within. I mean, it's so it's so unbelievable. I, think. I mean, I I know quite a lot about Russian history, and I studied up to sort of the Russian Revolution, so I didn't know too much about um, mm. what happened at the end of to Stalin. But it's you know, it, I knew that he basically just killed everyone he perceived as a threat, and so yes. there were no doctors to look after him because he's killed all the doctors. Basically. Or he put them on a death list. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so they were worried about getting a doctor in in case they got the wrong doctor in and one who was on a death list, and that's true. They no one interrupted it. I mean, the reason he died really, he had a stroke and he lay lying in a, a puddle of his own urine for like a day, a whole day and a half because the guards had always been told by him never to interrupt, right. never to come in, yeah. unless they, he had. So they were too scared to knock on the door. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's true, so it's his own kind of imposing of terror that But is that, that paranoia, him. and there's a certain world leader at the moment who seems to be a bit paranoid <laughs> and, I know. and seem to get rid of anyone who doesn't completely toe the line about yeah, being yeah, the yeah. greatest. Yeah, yeah, or worse still, because what Stalin did was he shut down opposition, you know, and he called pe anyone who disagreed with him an enemy of the people. And I, I, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is as bad as Stalin. <laughs> uh, uh, yet. Yet. But, you know, he, he doesn't countenance opposition. Yeah. He doesn't like people who disagree with him. Um, he doesn't like people who get more uh, column inches in the press than him. They, 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 he doesn't like any report, a news report that upsets him. But rather than challenge it, he will just say it's fake news and he will just keep going. Yeah. You figure. You're unpatriotic if you start challenging him. And so, and today he's, he's still challenging the widow of uh, someone who was killed, uh, a, a military personnel who was killed, be calling her a kind of a liar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because she says when he rang up to offer his condolences. He was just terrible at it. He said, well, he knew what he was getting himself into, and uh, so there you go, and couldn't remember his name. Yeah. And he's, he's denying all of that. So yeah. he's taking on, basically, a war widow. Yeah. Uh, and he's the president of the United States. And so but he seems, he's got away with everything so far, so you know, that's the, yeah. you have the balls to carry on. What's well, amazing, you know, it's amazing that, you know, you show all these instances where basically someone will shoot the person who was doing their job just before or whatever, and yeah. shoot them dead. Yeah. And you kind of think that person who's in the shooting must be thinking, hey, this isn't the end of the line. No, no, no. Uh, so Khrushchev, yes. Khrushchev had been through, who finally ended up being the Russian leader, um, had been through all these Soviets where everyone else who'd been with him on the Soviets was exterminated was or, yes. you know, in Technology. gulags. Yeah. And, and he was comfortable with that. And it must have been just such a terrifying... I mean, they've all, they all, uh, to get to where they were, the Politburo underneath Stalin, and being part of his close circle, they must have done terrible things, and they yeah. did. They supervised the kind of the famine in the Ukraine, coordinated famine, uh, you know, the collectivization of the farms that just led to mass starvation yeah. of peasants uh, and, and s former serfs. So, I mean, millions, millions died. Yeah. But they, they, they told themselves it was to make a better Soviet Union and to it was all for the good of the party and the nation. And, yeah, and it was you interesting know. when you, you see that when Michael Palin's character, which Molotov, is, Molotov, yes, it sort of believes so yeah. strongly in Stalin, even that when he's taken his wife away. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, well, Molotov, he's on a death list himself, yeah, I mean, and he still thinks, "What have I done wrong?" Mol <laughs> Molotov believes the party line, except the party line changes every half an hour, and he has to, <laughs> he has to re-scramble his brain so he can. 
believe the new thing that he's being asked yeah. to believe. And so Which is a very sort of Michael Palin thing it was, to, to do. <laughs> yeah. It's very good for Michael Palin. Yeah. And what was, see, Michael Palin is probably my all time comedy yeah. hero, who I've met once and was. Massive just, piece of shit. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just nasty, you know? Manipulative, cold, yeah. very cold, <laughs> you know? Shame. <laughs> Well, when I yeah. met him, I said hello and he walked away from me. But I was, oh, quite, wow. I was quite drunk, so my, that, that wasn't this time. <laughs> He's probably um, gone to get you some water. <laughs> He's that nice. I'm, just, I'm under. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well, subverting nice my own subversion of like Did, Cause he's very. I would nice. find it very hard to, you know, direct him. Was it? Was it? Was it? Oh no, you, it was lovely. Able to, it was, but it just, was great. You just. I mean, you must have grown up with Monty. Python. No, absolutely. Yeah, but 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 you only get people in if you think they'll be right for this yeah, part yeah. rather than oh I like him on the telly <laughs> 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 oh I'll have Wendy Craig in <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like Stalin's daughter Wendy Craig and I'll just get all the people I like on the telly <laughs> Hugh Edwards I've got him in <laughs> yeah, you take him every day I Hugh Edwards every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's casting <laughs> Um, no, it's, but no, yes, but it's, so, but so it's intimidating, surely. No, no, to no, be. but you meet and chat beforehand yeah. and talk about the script, and then we rehearse for a couple of weeks before and with yeah. everybody. So everybody, you kind of forget who everyone is, except you don't, because we were in this little church hall rehearsing, and there was Michael Palin and Jeffrey Tambor and Steve Buscemi and Sonia Russell Beale and Paul Whitehouse yes. carrying a body around. <laughs> it's very, very funny, <laughs> you know. And everyone else not involved just looking at each other going, I can't believe we're in the same room as this happening. <laughs> But they're quite different backgrounds as yes, performers, which absolutely. I think you were mentioning. So Paul, I mean, Paul was being very funny in the Q and A and chipping yeah. in, but he's a, he, you know, he he does come from a very different background than someone like Steve Buscemi. Yes. And yeah. So it's, it's as but I like that because they're all, you know, the, the characters were from different backgrounds, and I don't want the acting to be the same kind of note, you know, yeah. or, or the film to feel it just has one voice. And you know, it, this was this loose assembly of people. The only thing they had in common is that they had survived yeah. for the last 20 years under Stalin and got close to the half power. But fundamentally, they were all from different, different strata in society and different geographical areas as well. Yeah. Right, so, well, it's, it's a, it made me want to go and read all the books about it. And, I've made, and I do yes. want to see the film again, partly because I was in the toilet a lot. Yeah. I, I, it's just, I to, and, you know, I was drunk. <laughs> it was a nice... <laughs> I only had two beers, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but with no sleep. Well. Yeah, no sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, well, I, 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 would, I tried to write a film about Russian history. Well, I wrote a play about Russian history. I'm more obsessed with the Russian Revolution. Right. But it's, it feels like Russia is a sort of heightened version of normal politics with everything almost. Well, yes. Because yeah. like, the Russian Revolution, which we're on the 100 year anniversary of now, is about, all about these ridiculously wealthy people you know, having so much that they're. I mean, I went to I went to the Yusupov Palace where the, for Felix Yusupov was one of the killers of Rasputin, um, and you know they just had this ridiculous wealth where people in the streets had nothing and they yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. really think, oh, one day these guys are going to rise up and try and take some yeah. of this stuff back, yeah. which I think might be uh, might be sort of resonate a hundred years on. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you fancy doing another uh, another film about Russian history, I've got you know I've got uh, the makings of a film film about Rasputin. <laughs> That you can have a look at. Beauty. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, wrote, I wrote a play that didn't do very well. So, but okay. oh, no, I shouldn't say you're that. selling no, it. No, you're really. But it was really good, despite yeah. that. It was just that people were too. They didn't like the mixture of comedy and seriousness All that right. I put into. Um, I did it first, Armando, and uh, <laughs> then you. And, uh, but I just think that, that ra the murder of Rasputin is a very yes. is, is a similarly gr 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 graphic. It's kind of grotesque, funny, is it? As well, very it funny. Couldn't kill him. Yeah. But I think it's also just made up. It's just a made-up story. So they, it, okay. yeah, I think yeah. so. I, but it's, but yeah, he kept on coming back to life yeah, and yeah. Ch chasing around like a sort of Scooby Doo like, character. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I thought there was, there was a lot of it interesting. But I, I just, I think that's, that it's got this heightened whole thing of Russia. I don't know if it's the Russian, but also personality. It's sort of, you know, it's, we forget that Stalinism really gave birth to Animal Farm in 1984 and those kind of quite um, those tropes of kind of political satire that George Orwell came yeah. up with that you know that kind of dystopian you know Brazil as well the Terry Gilliam yeah. film and and the film 1984 which, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't, we, sh we should do as a costume drama now really yes. it's just in 19 in 80s clothes um, <laughs> um, but you know that 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 kind of that conceit of the party and the double speak and the, it's very it's just, that's what it all emanated from Stalinism yeah. really 
he was he was quite he was a one money. Uh, so this is like a kind of tech talk, isn't it? This it is, is turning into. A... Uh, well, we'll, we'll start talking about it in a sec. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, you said you've watched the Great Dictator. Um, mm. by Charlie Chapman, Chapman yes. Which, again, well, this almost combines the two subjects we're talking about in Charlie Chapman, but let, let's mm. skate over that. Uh, but um, Charlie Chapman, because I, I, uh, I, when I did Hit and Mustache, I, I watched um, uh, Great Dictator and read a bit about Charlie Chapman, and, he, and Chapman recognised a lot of himself in Hitler. <laughs> right, uh, in that, in that, in that, and I think there's an element of that, that a lot of comedians have that kind mm. of self-belief and that sort of dictatorial, once they get well, to a certain place. Well, and just... You know, being in charge of a room full of people, yeah, yeah. all just cheering them and applauding them, and so know, I, I think Chaplin power takes over. I think Chaplin is quite a harsh uh, director and quite a dictatorial director, yeah. and so I think you know, I think in a way, probably uh, better to be Charlie Chaplin than Hitler. You know, it's yeah. arguable, <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> but you can you find as as a director, you can you can see why d- directors go a bit crazy yeah. because. Um, you're in charge of a lot of people, and they're all asking questions, and they will do whatever you say. And normally, you give them answers which lead to the film being improved, <laughs> rather than just. But you do hear of directors who just give them terrible things to do as yeah. a kind of test or a, a, an abuse of power. Yeah. I mean, I'm slightly. Um, when I finish directing, my wife teases me that at home it takes me about two weeks to stop being a director because at home <laughs> I'm going. Right, uh, let's have some tea. Can we get some tea? Um, let's go for a ride. We go for a walk. Get the dogs. Get the dogs. Okay. I think we'll go this way. This way. Come on. You know, you just, you're still in that kind of mode of just ordering people around. And you yeah. can see why it turn people. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. that's, I mean, obviously, it's all, it's all, that's interesting. It's about power. And yeah, it's a power. Everything's about power. Well, you can see why comedians, I suppose. Yeah. Especially the big, you know, the big venue. And that's why you turn comics like. Um, Steve Martin stopped doing the big stadium because it just went too crazy. Yeah. And I just thought, this is mad. This is turning into Nuremberg. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just have to go, Wee! and they all, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The, the problem is people, right? That's the problem. It's the people. people. <laughs> it's the people who go along with the right. comedians and the fascist right. dictators. Right. Raise to plan. <laughs> yeah, see? see? Yeah. Fascists. Fascists. <laughs> terrifying, terrifying power. Ducks. <laughs> Ducks following the big duck. Oh, sorry, but it's um, <laughs> any film that right said Fred can sit all the way through yourself. is a good film. Yes. By him, but that is how I <laughs> that's how I judge it. Yeah, they didn't go to the top. Yeah, and they didn't go. So do go and see uh, the Death of Stalin, uh, mm. and uh, we'll talk. About, I'll ask you some emergency questions. I'll ask you that one I just asked the audience um, before the show. Uh, what is the most libelous thing you can say about Prince Andrew? Uh, Remembering it has to not be true. It has to that not is, be that true. is the. Uh, neither of his parents are royal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he came out of an egg. <laughs> that, some people believe David Icke believes he David did come <laughs> out of an egg. So there is, there is. Some, uh, I'll do, have we got an emergency questions app now? Did you know about that? Is that? Have you just run out of questions? Is that? Yeah, is no, that I just, it? I just thought I should do something. Okay. Oh, we're a bit serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be all. Uh, you know, clever and stuff, but, you know, I need to... Um, has your sibling ever seen a ghost, Armando? <laughs> I've asked you that before. sibling? Did you ask me? No. Well, I, I don't know. I might have done so. this. It's an old one. We're sure we saw a ghost at our old school once. Really? Yeah. What, yeah. what, how did it manifest itself? Well, it was just... Uh, it was, like, late. We were rehearsing our play, and, uh, you know, the school was empty, and we were in the, sort of the main, the gym area, which was, like, the main area that part of the school yeah. and there was just a little boy just looking through the window out, out of the corridor then when we went out to the corridor it was all locked there was wow. no one there could have been a little boy though couldn't but it I came, think came in and <laughs> and I think, looked I in. think it was a little boy I, I, I was walking the dog <laughs> I think you I was walking the dog the like other he day lived, he lived under the school yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much worse than it being a ghost it's a feral child it's a feral child <laughs> Uh, it's yeah. just been lost for a long time. Um, yeah. I, I had that the other day, when it's very dark, mm. I would, when you go, when you go in the countryside, it's very dark, isn't it? It's I mean, very dark. I was walking, there's a little bit, you get to a wood, and it's like you can they see... They should put, like, street lights. They should. <laughs> <in> the <laughs> horrible, it's horrifying. Yeah. When the moon's in, there's nothing, there's no light yeah. at all. Uh, and I went, you get to this wooded bit, and it's like complete blank of darkness. And I went in with a torch, and then I spun the torch around, yeah. and I, there was a little child there looking at me. Uh-huh. But, you know, it probably wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> Was it, it was Probably. just a gnarled log? Oh, no, I think it was just that. Just that. The corner I saw this little child, and then uh. when I turned around, it had gone. Uh. But that's you know, the human eye is not very efficient. 
<laughs> or there's just lots of kids running around to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever flown a kite, Armando? Uh, Probably, uh, yes, I have. Mm. Is, that, is that the question? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did it go for you? Uh, it's a bit fiddly, I find. Yeah, I never like the wind is never that. You know, if it gets windy, it's actually, you think, I'm going to be blown away. Oh, I do fly. I did a flow, I flew a kite in the Imaginucci shells. I spent oh. it for a sequence in the Imaginucci shells. I'm about to do the next film I'm going to do is David yeah. Copperfield by Charles of Dick. Of course, yeah. And Mr. Dick, who's uh, mentally ill, he's the first real honest depiction in literature of someone who's mentally ill. He gets these. Um, he's is his bothered. name Mr. Dick? His name is Mr. Dick. <laughs> That's. You run out of ideas. <laughs> Charles and, Dick. And he, um, he gets he's all like, these. I'm fed up, Mr. Merryweather, Mr. Dick. And it's the dick. I'm fed of this dick. shit. Just call him what he is. He's a yeah. fucking dick. <laughs> Mr. Fucking Dick. It's Harry Cork is here. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Yeah. No, Mr. Dick gets all these. He's trying to write a book, but he gets bothered by all these thoughts about Charles I being beheaded. He can't get them out. So what he does is he writes them down and he sticks the bits of paper he writes them down to, to he makes a kite of them and he goes and flies the kite. And every time the kite flies up, all the thoughts leave him. And then as the wind dies down and the kite falls down, all the thoughts go back in his head and he's just sad again. Good question, wasn't it? The kite question, I mean, yeah. that you mocked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm doing here. This isn't just yeah, thrown yeah, yeah. this isn't just thrown together by a man with an app just asking random questions. <laughs> obsessing about right said Fred um, what is the what is the strangest thing you've ever found in the embers of a bonfire <laughs> I think a human heart <laughs> was still beating <laughs> take you anywhere. so you are also another I like Russian history and I like sci-fi and you're doing a sci-fi comedy series is that right is that yeah I'm doing a pilot next doing the pilot. year yes I think we might have briefly mention it the last time you were here but so what's what's the oh uh, was that the robots that's a robot oh yeah that was robots that was also. this is different is it? terrible robots yeah. yes no, that's a film that's yeah. a film that we're working on okay guys you do so many things well, yeah. they're all things that I've done first yes and that you then go to <laughs> Uh, what's, what's the sitcom? The, the sci-fi thing is about a person who goes back in time and raids your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Would explain a lot. But, uh, yeah. And then goes to the present. Yeah. And then has a terrific career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But is then yeah. killed. Yeah. Violently by the person. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Seems like you're asking me to kill you. Okay, that's uh, um, yeah. No, it's called Avenue 5. Oh, yeah. So this is set in space tourism. Yeah. So, um, so it's set in about 30, 40 years' time when Elon Musk and uh, Richard Branson, who will by then be cryogenically preserved <laughs> in 40 years' time, uh, and, and space tourism. And I went, part of the research, I went out to uh, Richard Branson's. Uh, Virgin Galactic oh God, yeah. uh, place in the Mojave Desert. And it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of money for fundamentally three minutes of weightlessness. That's, that's did you, you, the plan. You, you, I didn't do it. Didn't no, no, it's not. It, not it, it's, it, they're still not doing it because no. they killed a man. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and didn't stop Noel Edmonds, did it? No, no. <laughs> no. Noel, however, didn't go on to advance space tourism. <laughs> he retreated into quiz show format we'll after the, the death. Next. We'll you know. the next. Um, I'm not saying Richard Branson <laughs> killed him. I'm saying someone died in a, yes, an accident at Virgin Galactic. So they're still doing all the safety procedures there. Yeah. So but they don't just let the people go and have a little crack bit. No, if they're no. writing a sitcom. No. Come, I'm writing a sitcom. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Um, but um, it was kind of interesting, but uh, I went around it with someone who turned out to have been an astronaut. Okay. Because she was asking lots of very specific <laughs> questions, like, you know, what's the acceleration? And, and, but she was slightly dubious as well, because it, it was just fundamentally, it's a lot of money for you leave the Earth's atmosphere and then you just curve round and then fall back down again. Yeah. And that curving round is three minutes when you, you leave Earth. Yeah. I did want more than that, because, I mean, throwing up is going to take two and a half days. <laughs> you know. But, you know, people said to Christopher Columbus, it? it's a lot of money, isn't it, to get four ships to go across the... Did they nation? say that? <laughs> yes. Richard, did they say <laughs> that? Did they say, that'll be a lot of money? 
Do they actually say the that? Ships. And yeah. And then you know, this, the next stage is four minutes in space, and then yeah, suddenly know, it's I all know. worthwhile. Yeah. But I said to the guy, "Where do you see yourself in five years' time?" And he went, "Oh." <laughs> so, so, uh, so there you go. So I thought that was quite funny. Actually, just thought, "Oh, it's not quite as sophisticated as you think it might be." Um, so that, but so the idea would be set in that one. But other than that, I I cannot say okay. what it's about. But it's not about politics. Okay. <laughs> or swearing. Yeah. No. No. Uh, but, but David Copperfield is full of swearing. Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> You've been learning the piano. Uh, yes, I uh, been yes about ten years ago I, I, I started and then yeah. I, yeah and I did my grade one. <laughs> because I have to kind of work to deadlines, so I thought I'll uh, I'll I'll do lessons. Yeah. So I had a lesson a week, and the thing is, when you're an adult and you're paid for the lessons, if she says, "Have you practiced?" you can go, "No," <laughs> just like that, in, in a way that you can as a kid. Really. <laughs> so just, I didn't go, "No," <laughs> I just went, "No, I haven't. I haven't practiced." Uh, she goes, okay, oh well. Um, and then I went for my grade one, and I didn't realise that um, the the exams are at someone's house. I thought you go oh, went yeah, to yeah. some like exam school, or something. <laughs> I don't know. Academy. You, you go to someone's house, yeah. and I sat there with the other candidates who were all <laughs> five years old <laughs> in, in their kitchen on little blue plastic chairs, kind of like that. And they said in the briefing notes, you know, there will be a small keyboard to kind of warm up on. And it was a plastic kind of children's keyboard thing that was half the size, any anyway, half. The, I mean, you couldn't practice. You might as well just turn on one of the tunes that were already pre-programmed. Um, and so I was sitting there, and a glorious piece of Chopin was being played by some candidate through the next door. And the door would open, and a four-year-old would walk out, really, really smug. And the invigilator came over to me and said, um, are you the candidate? And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and she said, well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in, and it was a massive grand piano. And I realised I'd been practising on one of these electric, digital, with very soft keys. Yeah. And this is a grand piano. This was, like, really heavy. It was like picking up a trumpet or something. I mean, it, was like, it felt like a different instrument. Yeah. So I could, couldn't play it. I, I was, and I started laughing because it was just all, and, and the invigilator couldn't really comment. I tried to make some funny remarks to her. She couldn't comment because <laughs> she was being inspected by the invigilator's inspector. He was doing a snap inspection. So it all had been very formal. So I was doing this kind of crazy, it must have looked like I was drunk because I just, <laughs> it was just a different instrument. It's not the same. It's not the same and it was just, and I'm thinking, but I've, you know, I've won a BAFTA. <laughs> I, I think, why am I here? Why am I doing this? I don't, and yeah, I'm terrified. It was awful. And I, anyway, I, and I passed by one mark. And I think, I think it was out of pity, really. But there's something funny about, you know, being sort of middle-aged, learning stuff, because I, before that, I, I wasn't a very, I was never a very good swimmer at school. I seem to have missed the lesson where, they made you good at it and comfortable about diving in and all. I just I seemed to miss that. And I saw this thing of, um, you know, improvers' lessons. So I went to the improvers' lessons and it was me and other sort of <laughs> middle-aged businessmen <laughs> all feeling very vulnerable in just swimming trunks, being bad at something, even though we've, you know, I, I've, I've got an assistant, I've got people who do stuff for You know, suddenly you're very... You feel very, and it's an 18 year old by the side telling you what to do. Yeah. And it was fine, I really enjoyed it, and I, I, I'm a much, much better swimmer. But there was one guy during the, um, the, the crawl, he was not getting it at all, and he just went, Well, aerodynamically, this just isn't possible. <laughs> and, she, and the instructor, she said, But people have been doing this for like thousands of years. I mean, trust me, you know, trust me. He went, No! And he just got out <laughs> and just walked away. <laughs> And he never came back. He's a beekeeper, that guy as well. He's in his day, he's got this. You can't do what that you're doing. Three years later, he was found dead in a canal. Uh, <laughs> just, just couldn't cope with the idea of not being good and yeah. being wrong and being told what to do and looking a fool. Yeah. You know. 
It's interesting. I, I, I had piano since I was a child, like yes. a normal person would. And I, think, I, I, think I, I think I probably got about the same score on my grade one. I used to hate it, though. I used to hate going Yes. Back. Well, I think at the time, you just think, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, it's I knew got to I was, want to do it. I knew I was terrible as well. I, I did enjoy, uh, you know, although it was a slightly traumatic, it, I did love the idea of just being able to make sense of the music yeah. and to actually hear the notes and, yeah. and get some sense of, uh, almost like you you know, you're touching the music for the first time, really. It's a song, isn't it? Um, do, have you done anything in middle age? I've done nothing. Up? <laughs> done nothing. <laughs> I've taken nothing. What have I done in middle age that I've taken up? Yeah. Well, I tried skiing. and this, oh, uh, Yeah, I tried oh, skiing and I couldn't do that. Do that. I mean, well, because my wife insisted. Really? If you go to my... I'll have to put it up somewhere. There's a very... There's a video of me. I'll, put it, I'll try and put it in, the, in now. I'll get up. Chris Evans to cut it in. There's a video of me, that some of you may have seen, uh, where I, my wife filmed the last 30 seconds of my attempts at skiing. We'd come down the whole mountain, and it yeah. looks like I'm. It looks like they've slowed down what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, and there's children whizzing past me, and I'm literally going so slowly, you think I might not be moving. And then, Start going backwards. And then, even though I, even though I'm going that slowly, I guess I've come to a stop. And then somehow managed to trip over yes, that's my it. own thing, and then fall over. That's why it's I refuse to go skiing because yeah. everyone I know has gone skiing. Has ended up badly injured. Yeah. And I, that's a holiday. I do, you know, holiday it's cold. Holiday. It's horrible. Why go somewhere cold where you can get destroyed? Yes. Well, <laughs> and die. And <laughs> frankly, die. Well, I want somewhere hot. Yeah. You know, and I was. Oh, yeah. It's very difficult to do something. Like, the piano thing is a, the one right. flaw in the film Groundhog Day. Well, there are a few flaws, but the main flaw in the film Groundhog Day mm. is that Bill Murray goes to have piano lessons. Yes. Every day for a long time. Yes. At the end of the film, he's playing this brilliant piano piece. Yes. And the piano teacher goes, that's my pupil. No. Not if it's the same day. No, so she, yeah. what's happened on that day is Bill Murray's turned up. Why has he even turned up? Yeah. He <laughs> why has he wasted lesson. an hour doing a piano lesson when yeah. he could just yeah. say, well, I'll make sure that I'm good at the piano a week yeah, yeah, before yeah. we get to yeah. this day. Yeah. But he, he wouldn't turn up. But if, say, he turns up, he turns up and goes, but she goes, oh, well, there's nothing I can teach you. You know everything. And she's is not that the go, only unrealistic thing about the that's the that's <laughs> I think it's very important to get everything uh, right, okay. com- <laughs> logically correct if yeah. you're going to do these yeah. uh, films. So okay. I'm very disappointed uh, in Harold Ramis <laughs> for his. I have nearly reason. died on holidays, though. I nearly got run over by a hippopotamus. <laughs> My wife and I were chased by a hippopotamus. Right. We were in a jeep, we were in an open top jeep, and the driver, who was like a big sort of gamekeeper, was very scared and <laughs> ran. Because they are the biggest killers in Africa, yeah. the hippos. And we both simultaneously thought if we had got killed, no one would take our funeral seriously because we were crushed by a hippo. Yeah. That was the only thing that was making us actually <laughs> run away. I think, um, I'm more, very worried about an embarrassing death. I, I did yeah. a, do a whole routine in one show about the, a death that could lead to a pun, which for me is lots of deaths because okay. there's lots of fish yeah. and herring puns you can do. But yeah, it's just the idea of dying in an embarrassing way is worse because those people who die wanking in wardrobes and stuff. Yeah. In wardrobes? Well, you know, they're wanking old... <laughs> Kung Fu, didn't he? Kung Fu died wasn't wanking in a wardrobe. C.S. Lewis, that wasn't. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> as, 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 I know there's a sort of subtext. I thought it was a religious subtext to it. I didn't think it was. Uh, Aslan was wanking in the wardrobe, right. that's, that's, why, that's why he died. Right, okay. And hanging yourself, that's an embarrassing way to die, because yeah. whatever else you do, that's it, isn't it? When you do, yeah. when you, if you were killed by a hippopotamus, that would that be, would be that the first forever. thing. The man who's killed by a hippopotamus and, and copied yeah. the idea of a partridge. You even say on the gravestone, <laughs> Armando Hippopotamus. <laughs> you yeah. yeah. And he only died at the bottom of the sea. I mean, yes, he was yeah. Did I tell you this? I don't mean, my, let's say, let's go again. I, I did see this story, but I don't know if we talked. Did we talk about this in the last one? No, we didn't. No, let's go. No. It was, um, uh, 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 you, could, you could go to, it wasn't very deep, but it was like five metres. And you could walk, the advertised walking at the bottom of the sea and feeding... <laughs> The colourful fish, yeah. and what you do is you go in this boat. They put the, 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 a kind of like an old Victorian diving glass diving bell on you that's attached to a pump, and they put lead all round you, you know, so you sink to the bottom of the sea. Yeah. Fortunately, I'd done a little bit of scuba diving, so it wasn't you know crazy. Um, but my diving bell just started to fill up with water, <laughs> and, and therefore it had less and less oxygen in it. And the thing I realised was as the oxygen leaves as you as you basically suffocate it's sort of quite pleasant <laughs> so i was kind of going oh god i'm going to drown but oh can i be bothered doing anything about that <laughs> now that i'm here you know it's just i really it's quite uh, i 
Can you just shut my up? You know? <laughs> yeah, fortunately, there was a scuba diver down there who could see it filling up. <laughs> reached over and turned a, a valve and filled it up. But I, yeah, I nearly died at the yeah. bottom of the sea. That was lucky. It was lucky. It'd be embarrassing because you know there'd be the headlines: be man who just passed his grade one <laughs> <laughs> dies in five meters of water. Think of this in a, stunning in a cartoon, <laughs> st stunning concert career that's gone to waste. <laughs> Yeah. Or any other career, because there's an alternative possibility. There are. That's, that's what my. Uh, that's all I'm, I'm not going to talk to you anymore about it. Um. <laughs> In another world, you already have Richard, <laughs> and I have the formula. Oh, this is a question I wanted yeah. to ask you about the death of Stalin. Do you think Stalin ever tried to suck his own cock? <laughs> in all your research. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I think he, I, I think his cock would have been scared. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. Of displeasing him. Yeah. I think he, no. 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 Because um, I think he would be worried if he'd made the connection. Uh, there, there would be no, uh, he'd be, there, there'd be no need for anyone else. Yeah. You know? I think he preferred to, he, once his wife committed suicide, which That's he did, right, yeah. um, he was very, he was a different person. <laughs> very unemotional. Yeah. Detached. Was he, but was he a woman? It's a disappointing was answer, he, was he a, was, I mean, Barry was so, just the really horrible thing, the haunting thing about the film. Yeah. With that, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler. Is what he and I and this is again. I mean, much of all this stuff is obviously what actually happened. But um, he gave the the we get girls back and and bury them. This was bury, yeah, bury yeah. yeah, and then give them a bunch of flowers to give to their parents. Yeah, as sort as of thank you. Yes, I know. Yes, that's that's, that's all true. That's really um, haunting and horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't make jokes about that for that reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's really Oh, and, and you, you have a, a new book out. Many you've written many books, and this book is about uh, classical, classical music. music. Yeah, we've done that. Though, we, we have talked about it before. Yeah. Well, just, do I mention it? Yeah, thank Hear you. me out. Is that what Hear it's me called? Out? Yeah. yeah. Do you like to see what I'm, I'm, I'm not going to listen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, uh, you talk about. I, I think what you were talking in one of the interviews about um, the tyranny. The re part of the reason you like classical music is because of the tyranny of the keepers of cool. Oh uh, well, only in that I, you know, everyone says, you know, I was never really cool as a as a as a kid and a teenager. I was never, you know, my brothers were much cooler than me, and I always felt, why am I not? Why do I not get it? You know? Yeah. Um, I was never interested in fashion. You know, when you when your relatives give you money at Christmas, why spend it on clothes? I never <laughs> understood that. You know, I wanted to spend it on my books and comics and things. Yeah. Um, and then when I heard classical music for the first time, Halls of the Planets, at, just at school, just a record, I, that, that sound, the sound of the orchestra, was suddenly, I thought, that's my noise. That's, that's I can relate to that. Yeah. And, um, and it's been like that ever since, really. I mean, I have gone back and, you know, listened to the Beatles. Yeah, they're a good one. Bowie. Beatles, Bowie's good. Yeah. Hot tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Right, yeah. said Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're big fans of you, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's just, I think you should go and listen to their yeah, two records. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget Deeply Dippy. Oh, yes. Don't forget deep, deep, Deeply Dippy. And, um, was Bob Dylan, he could write a song, yeah. couldn't he? Pete Bainham loves Bob Dylan. He does love Bob Dylan. He made us listen to Bob Dylan in the, in the tour van. I didn't like Bob Dylan. Did you not? For that reason? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had Stuart Lee playing all his fucking shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Pete Bailey came in playing Dylan. I One Dylan. time I put on um, Graceland by Paul Simon. Okay. And nope. Stu went, that made me feel sick listening to <laughs> <laughs> And it was literally a, a six, 60 minutes of the entire four tours I did with them. I played one of my records. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's how I feel all the time. <laughs> <laughs> How with Peter and Bob? I mean, how did you respond to just hours of? <laughs> You've got to overcome that, haven't you? You've got to overcome like the weird sound. Yeah. And then once, once you've overcome the horrible sound of his voice, Judas. <laughs> well, we don't listen to his voice. Yeah. It's quite good music, isn't it? But it's no such a big <laughs> So 
nothing like him. So. I saw a shop yesterday. Oh, yes. Called the Lovely Little Wine Shop. Yes, sounds nice. Sounds nice. But I just thought, what happens if there's a siege? <laughs> and on the news, they have to say, 10 people are dead in the Lovely Little Wine Shop. There seems no end to the terrible, terrible scenes in the lovely little wine shop. <laughs> the horror of the lovely little wine shop is now in its 11th day with no end in sight. Do you think that shop owners should think ahead to, to this? <laughs> well, it's a nice name, but it's a nice what, name. If? what if? <laughs> Did you go? little white shop, no gun. We <laughs> 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 preserve our ethos of loveliness. We oh. do not have any armed personnel. Do you, do you think we're going to be all right in the world, or do you think it's, it's well, all Well, I used up? to, yeah. and now I, I wonder, yeah. because... Uh, I mean, what I got cheered up by the fact that during the last election, because uh, it was such a cynical move by Theresa May, Yeah. Just, you know, just give me more votes, and more votes I have, then easier Brexit will be. Fuck off. And, and <laughs> I got cheered off that more people voted than before, and more young people registered to vote. So that is at least um, a part of Thank you. you know, as an under <laughs> there's, there's a young person in the back. That at least said, oh, well, people are now engaging. Yeah. Because I think what had happened really was for the last 15, 20 years, people were disengaging because. Um, if you want to be serious about it, I think I all politicians have sort of gravitated towards the sort of the middle, the middle England, you know, the hundred thousand in the marginals who would sway it. And so everything was geared towards them, just assuming that everyone on the left would vote how everyone on the left normally votes and everyone on the right would vote how everyone on the right normally votes. And, and, and therefore those bigger numbers being left not top to started to look for other people, really. Yeah. You know, whether it was Farage or, you know, whatever. It, and... Um, but it did mean that fewer people were getting more cynical about politics, ever being able to do anything. So, um, and then uh, the rise of populist movements in in France and Turkey turning into a kind of autocratic regime. So and now Trump, it just um, so. Then anyway, there's that one ray of hope I thought, but you know that's not enough. No, well, yeah. and Trump's quite a big one, isn't he? Because if he Kind of stays yeah. for the whole time. I think I something's going to happen. Isn't something it? is going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean uh, in terms of him lasting? Or well, lasting? just if he stays, then he's going to fuck something up. That's I think in the him. end he's going to do something terrible. Yeah. Be out of sheer annoyance or <laughs> peak with someone, he's going to. Uh, uh, and there's all this talk about the military trying to keep a rein in on him. And but you know, it, it, it's easy to get round that. You know, he is the president. He can easily sack the military yeah. that he doesn't think are behind him. And put some new ones in. So, um, and he is increasingly frustrated. He's like the guy who got out of the swimming pool because it just wasn't working. <laughs> yeah. He's increasingly frustrated with this thing called the American Constitution, which stops the president from having absolute power. And he cannot, um, he cannot stand the idea that the Senate won't vote his way, or Congress won't vote his way, or judges won't do what he says. Yeah. And and he's so used to being the CEO and in charge of his own company, where people run around, you know doing things for him, that he can't quite comprehend this fact that there are rules that stop him from, and he just he just gets more and more annoyed as a result. He's already talking about withdrawing the license from various broadcasters for, for broadcasting fake news, yeah. and, and, and people are starting to buy into that argument as well. They should watch uh, your film and then see what happens to the, yeah, the people. Yeah, what happened before <laughs> and they never yeah. happen again. So, so it does, does sort of give... And I find him difficult to be kind of funny about, in a way, Donald yeah. Trump. I mean, he is... He is his sort of old clown, really. And his tweets are kind of jokes in that they're kind of attempted jokes and they're very, they're exaggerations. Mm. They're twists of logic and stuff like that that he writes. Um, so I don't really know. Well, I think it's a bit like, you know, without saying Trump's like Hitler, Trump is exactly like Hitler because he... Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, because everyone just underestimated him. Thought It's exactly the same way. Yeah. He rose to power because everyone just thought, oh, it's okay, we can, yeah, we can we'll, serve we'll this, we can use yeah, it, yeah, we'll yeah. use this power. And everyone's laughing and it's comical and, you know, yeah. he's biding his time while they're laughing. And there's that very telling clip of Trump when Obama's ragging on him, when Obama's president and he's yeah. sitting in the audience and, and, Trump and, and Obama's doing jokes about him. And he's just sitting there fuming. Yeah. Not even like you know, not most people in that situation. Ah, ah. 
Yeah, yeah but yeah. he doesn't even try to laugh along, and you kind of think this is what it's all about. This is yeah. he's actually just trying to get revenge for those, and he doesn't. People can laugh at him and laugh at him, and then yeah. they just turn and yes, no, he doesn't like jokes funny. about him. No, you know, and tweeting about Saturday Night Live doing a sketch about him and saying it's unfunny, and yeah. you know, it's it's just a man. He is he is this the ultimate narcissist who yeah. doesn't like anyone having an opinion different from him or from stopping him from doing what he wants. And now he's the most powerful man in the world. Yeah. It's almost like some dystopian <laughs> sci-fi kind of uh, thing where yeah. it just things... That's the thing. His, all his, uh, his ads during the election looked like the sort of ads in like Robocop or something, where they do like a fiction of like the future gone mad and there's a mad president in power <laughs> and here are his ads. They were like that. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. It's sort of the flaw with democracy, isn't it? That people are stupid, so we should have some <laughs> opinion. But it's, but, yeah. it's, but, you know, that's right. What my dad used to say. He, he was uh, he he fought in the partisans during the war against Mussolini, and then moved to the UK. Never took UK citizenship, and we always used to say, "Well, you can't vote." He said, "What's the point of vote? The last election I took part in, Mussolini got in." You know, and that's that is a thing, which is what I was saying about it's good that more people are registering now. You've got to protect democracy and, and don't think because you have democracy it's with you permanently and it's perfect. It has to be continually sort of renewed and, and participated. Yeah. You know, otherwise if it if it gets frayed at the edges, this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's very people fill the it, vacuum. It's very easy to take it for granted. I think that's you know and you yeah. sort of think all that stuff in the past is in the past, yeah. all that people no. and music's in the past. But there's no reason why it can't definitely, you know, in, no. in certain parts of the world, obviously, it still does does exist. But I was, well, I was talking to someone on, I did a panel show in Scotland, and they were talking about Brexit, and the woman said, the, the, the people have spoken, we have to respect their right. And you kind of yeah. go, what, even if you're, yeah. if you're driving off a cliff, and the driver's driving, and you've all agreed to you've do it. You've all agreed it, to drive off <laughs> And then you suddenly then you go, go, hang on. No, <laughs> you're allowed to change your mind, you know. It's like the scenely shot at the end of Thelma and Louise, where yeah. Thelma now says, actually, can we turn around? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, yeah it's, this, is, uh, this is pretty stupid. This yeah. is at best a Pyrrhic victory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. Um, well. Well, that's sorted that out. Um, it seems like we're with fuck them. Uh, so. Um, yeah. You're tired. You are tired. I'm, well, I'm not. I'm feeling all right, really. Actually, it just you know, it's been it's been an emotional day. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to talk uh, about it? No, I mean, no. I, I'm glad that I did. I, I've been to lots of funerals and not cry. I did cry at this funeral yes. in the end. Yeah. Uh, and I've, you know, I've buried some of my relations and not really felt very much. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were dead. I felt it. They were dead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to know that that's, yeah. that, that's still there. But, you know. There's a know. story that's about to come out in the world of podcasting. <laughs> so much talked about it within we know what was on in the world of podcasting <laughs> podcasters what they get up to their abuse of power it is, you know. it is a very, I've got a very powerful situation like filmmakers are coming to me can you get some of the other proper directors to come on this <laughs> <laughs> could you get Michael Palin to come on here and Jeffrey Tambor and Steve Buscemi. I'll certainly oh, when ask you do him. your next film, can you make yeah. that a condition, okay. like, a, like a Harvey Weinstein yeah. condition? You yeah. can have this part on if the you condition. Come here. You have to come and be asked if you ever tried to suck your own cock by Richard Herring. <laughs> Can't just imagine me asking Michael Palin that, how yeah. great that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I'm going to ask him. He's that. got a great story for every country in the world. Yeah, of course he has, yes. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. been everywhere. Yeah. Been on, he's been on the Adam Buxton podcast. Mm. Is that. <laughs> Is that your enemy? Is that is my that, bitter enemy? Adam your, Buxton. Yeah. He listens to this. If you're listening at home, Adam Buxton, I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill you. He's in Norfolk somewhere, isn't he? Or somewhere. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty easy to find him. He is pretty. Yeah. Well, last time I was in Norwich, I just yeah. but I was got lost in Norwich. Was on the outskirts of Norwich uh -huh. and bumped into. He just he, his car drove. I was thinking about him, uh -huh. and then his car drove round into. He's getting a picture frame. He, put, he pulled into a picture um, frame ahead of me. Uh -huh. I was about to get angry with him because I thought he was cutting me up, and then I uh -huh. saw it was Adam Buxton. Oh, right. So he's very easy to just go to Norwich and you'll see. <laughs> the, Hang uh, around picture framers. This is the, the ring road. This is the Norwich ring road. Yes, yeah, the yeah, Norwich yeah. ring road. I was stuck on. Yeah. Um, we know why it's so busy, don't we? Because the pedestrianised there. Yeah. <laughs> you came up with that line, didn't you? <laughs> 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 
Well, Armando, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Come back with, uh, Steve, with Michael Perry. Steve, 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 Steve. <laughs> <laughs> just tell Michael Caine, I'll you, bring him on. <laughs> Can you say we're going for a drink and then oh it's a little place on no doubt come it down there. There's to be a stage with two chairs on it. <laughs> and um, they'll, they'll be too embarrassed to leave, won't they, if, they, yeah. if we talk to them? JK Rowling. Uh, you know, that's yeah. I she retweet she retweeted something I did the other day and oh, replied right. to me, so I'm, I'm trying to get her on, but she hasn't she hasn't responded. So. <laughs> I don't think that's enough, is it? If someone you can't just go, Oh, I'm glad you like that tweet. Would you like to come into London yeah. and be on my podcast? where I've been quite rude about Harry Potter in the past, but it was a joke, it was a joke. <laughs> There's a very good exhibition on the British Library of Harry Potter Oh, there is, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <sighs> well, now she doesn't need to come on, does she? That could have, that would have, now you've played yeah, that. Yeah, if she'd come on earlier, <laughs> it would have launched her career. But no, <laughs> just think about, no need think that. how much more yeah. entrance fees to the free British Library exhibition she could get <laughs> <laughs> to add. Yeah. Can't make sense, right? It's kids' books, you can't be making that much. <laughs> so, the, um, the business margin is very, very <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming on. I hope you will come on again in the future with another project. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, I'm Andy Yunichi! We'll be back in about 15 minutes. So John Maloney, don't go away. Don't go away. Find the emergency message. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>